I'd like to introduce you to one of our major projects for the semester that goes in your notebook. And it has to do with plant evolution, um, particularly speciation. Right now, I'm standing in the Arroyo Seco, just past the uh, JPL Bridge. Uh, it's doing its Seco thing. You'll notice in the water course back here, there's no water right now. A little bit further up there is. In fact, if I look in the background, I can start to see these uh, trees, the larger alder trees, indicating the place where the water is most of the year. Um, but I've moved a little bit further down um, from that area to where the stream dries out, and I'm standing mostly in a willow forest. So in the riparian habitats, the um, plant communities shift from alders, um, where the water flows almost year-round at the surface, and then as it begins to dry out a little bit more for more of the season, you end up with a uh, willow forest. And then if I went further down, I'd end up in a, uh, in a sort of um, baccarus or mule fat scrub habitat. Anyhow, so I'm in this sort of intermittent place where there are willows. And this project has to do with um, the evolution of different species. So you have a choice in this of different uh, species groups of closely related individuals that you find together sometimes. Um, and it sort of begs the question, how do these species exist together without competing? How did the speciation occur in these cases? So for example, um, behind me here, this plant <laughs> is, um, is the sandbar willow. Okay, it's a uh, Salix excedua. And um, it's got a particularly lovely sort of light bluish white tinge to the leaves. They're long and narrow, um, but it's growing uh, right next to another member of the same genus. Um, this lovely individual here is the red willow. You might notice there's sort of a red tinge to the stem. Leaves, uh, while still arrow-shaped, are uh, pointed, a lot larger, fatter, if you will, <laughs> than the Salix excedua. And it's growing right next to this other member of the same genus. And then right across the way, we'll walk on over here. <laughs> there we have yet another member of the genus Salix. This is the Arroyo willow. <laughs> All three of these guys living literally within a few steps of one another. Um, so what we're going to do is explore how this could happen. Um, the idea of two species or three species in this case um, developing in one place is called sympatric speciation. Sympatric means uh, sims together and the patric refers to like patriot uh, refers to like a land they share together. So um, it's kind of an unusual thing when uh, you have speciation occurring at, uh, uh, in the same place, because then you wonder, well, how did they get reproductively isolated enough for their genetics to change over time in such a way that, uh, that they are now, if you will, formal species? So we're going to explore them by looking very closely at each one of these, the members of the species. So, for example, we might look at leaf shape, we might look at bark, we might look at the details of how the trunks go, or the height, or the exact conditions they live in. Like, are there different, like, soil types down at the base? Are there um, particular things that they grow nearby that the others perhaps don't? Is there a way they partition the environment so that they each occupy a slightly different place? in the environment so that they can live side by side without competing. Um, this would be called niche partitioning. A niche is, is a, to be fancy, multi-dimensional hyperspace that a species occupies. And all that means is that all the different things that you might be able to uh, measure or consider about a species, each one would be a dimension, like height and width and leaf length and leaf shape and the texture on the surface of the leaf, um, the soil dryness or sandiness, um, all of these things, the humidity they can tolerate, the temperatures they can tolerate, the water availability they can tolerate, each one of those would be a different dimension. Now, obviously you can't plot more than three dimensions on a graph, but you can make multiple graphs and altogether that would sort of occupy or demonstrate um, or communicate 
the multi-dimensional hyperspace. So we're just going to be making really careful observations of these species. Um, all about their leaf shape and things. We're also going to look at them microscopically to see if there are hints in their uh, detailed anatomy, like the histology level, where we're going to section some of these leaves and maybe stems and look at the internal anatomy to see if there's some structures internally that tell us how these different species um, are occupying slightly different niches in this environment. You'll have some choices. The genus Salix is, a, is one choice that we'll see at all our field sites um, in different, you know, different species combinations. There'll also be um, a couple of Roos, which would be in a slightly different habitat. In fact, if I turn like this and you look way up in the background, this is the sage scrub bordering chaparral environment. And these very large shrubs are Melosma lorina. And they are in this group that would include that, that species, the laurel sumac, and uh, sugar bush, um, which is Rus ovata, and the other is Rus integrifolia, the lemonade berry. And those three also tightly related and interesting to see how they might, um, how they might be able to exist in the same environment side by side. Um, the other option, um, which I suppose, looking way up there, you can see an oak tree <laughs> in the oak forest, which is the third type of community we might look at, um, there are many species of oaks doing the same thing. This is the genus Quercus. And so you can have a, 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 your choice <laughs> of which of those three groups you would like to study. And um, over the course of the semester in the field, um, you will want to organize your notes and things and do a careful study of each of the species that you find in each location. And this will be one of our major projects for the semester. And hopefully it will give us some insights into how speciation and then how the ecology of diversity might manifest. All right, there you go.